In the previous video on Monte Carlo integration for molecular ensemble properties, we mentioned that there's a problem with Monte Carlo for most molecular systems in that most structures don't contribute at all to properties. The probability of observing most structures is basically zero because the energy of most structures is much, much greater than the Boltzmann, fa Boltzmann constant times temperature. So the Boltzmann factor and thus the probability of most uh, states is basically zero. So what we need is a Monte Carlo method that is preferentially biased towards low energy structures and will will randomly, you know, compute things but mostly favoring low energy structures for those properties. Okay, so how do we do that? That's an algorithm called Metropolis Monte Carlo or Metropolis Hastings, Metropolis Metropolis, various things it's called, but it is basically this algorithm which improves Monte Carlo to preferentially uh, prefer low energy structures. All right, so what is this algorithm? So first, we are going to assign an initial set of molecular coordinates, as we have been indicating throughout this chapter. X naught is a vector of all of our 3n coordinates of our n atoms. So we assign some initial geometry to it. And then what do we do? We randomly perturb it. So that's one key difference is that we're not uh, choosing a completely new structure randomly. We're perturbing the old one. But it's really how, how we perturb and whether or not we do that is going to be the key difference here. So x, if I use the same notation I've been using, xn plus 1 is equal to xn plus x rand. So at each step we're going to there's going to be some random perturbation of our structure. So we're going to displace it by a random amount in a random direction. All right, so we are going to randomly perturb the structure. That's the Monte Carlo part of it. So what do we do then? So if e well, then we're going to compute the energy. I'll say that's step three, if this will go backwards. Apparently not. OK, I'm stuck with it. I'll we'll say compute E or V or whatever energy we're interested in. All right. I guess I'll say compute EN if E of n plus 1 is less than E of n, then I guess I should call this n plus 1 as well. If E n plus 1 is less than or equal to E of n, what are we going to do? Then we are going to accept x n plus 1. All right, so if the energy goes down, we take the new structure. All right, simple enough. Uh, what if it doesn't? So if it does not, then we are going to have to compare some things. So if En plus 1 is greater than En, so this is where we, we bias towards low energy structures. If it's low energy, we accept it. If it's high energy, we have to think about it. All right, so what are we going to do if the energy goes up? If it goes up, we are going to compare if e to the minus e n plus 1 minus e n over k t. So this is a relative Boltzmann factor, e to the minus delta e over k t. So that's a value that's going to, as, it, as e n plus 1 equals e n, that's going to be 1. As e as it gets bigger and bigger, as the energy goes up higher and higher, this is going to decay exponentially towards zero. So this is a number that starts at one when they're equal, and as it gets as e n plus one gets bigger and bigger relative to e n, it's going to go towards zero. So then we see if this is greater than a random number, which is between zero and one. And again, just like these random perturbations, computers are very good at selecting random numbers for you. So you have some function which selects them. 
So we see if it's bigger or smaller than a random number between 0 and 1. So the Boltzmann factor here is like a probability of acceptance. So as the, if the energy is a little bit higher, it's pretty likely that we're going to accept it. If it's, if it's a good bit higher, then it's less likely. If the energy is much higher, there's almost no chance that we're going to accept this move. So we compare it there, and then we say if yes, accept the new structure. So that's if we accept it, and then if no, keep the original structure xn. Okay, so we only update it to the new structure if it passes this test here. This is the metropolis part of the algorithm. So Monte Carlo is a random is a random perturbation of the structure. Metropolis part is we are going well, what did I my perturbation has gone away. Okay, we'll write that again. How strange. X to the N plus X Xn plus X random. Okay. So if it passes the test, we keep it. If not, we reject it and keep the old one. And then repeat has one E. That would be great if I could spell. Repeat until number of trials is reached. So we specify the number of trials before we begin. And then once we do this that many times, uh, we will stop. Okay, and then the other caveat to notice here is that uh, what is the choice for how big this random displacement is? So it is random, but we want to control a little bit about how that works. So what we can do is adjust kind of the expected magnitude of that. Adjust it such that around 50% of structures are accepted. Okay, because if we're accepting too many structures, it, we mean, it means we're not displacing far enough and we're not exploring enough of the configuration space. If we're, if we're accepting too few of the structures, our displacement is too big and we're getting stuck at the same place too much. So there's kind of a delicate balance here between displacing too much and displacing too little and hopefully every you know hundred iterations or so you try to adjust your value such that you would have accepted uh, around half of them but that's also you know a value that can be adjusted depending on the goals of your particular simulation okay um, so there this I, as I said, is going to massively improve the naive Monte Carlo because we need far fewer points than the naive Monte Carlo this way. It's much more, you're going to uh, much better sample and much more efficiently sample uh, your, your system. Some of the problems uh, arise in these following notes. So one is called the multiple minima problem. So maybe we get stuck in kind of one low energy region and we prefer to stay around there a lot. Maybe it, the temperature isn't low, isn't high enough for us to get enough energy to go over and travel to some new low energy region. So maybe we're stuck sampling in one particular region that doesn't, that uh, isn't the whole picture there. So that can be, there's various more advanced techniques that can help to solve that problem. But as I said, it's much more efficient than the naive Monte Carlo. And as we noted, there's no time here. It's not molecular dynamics. So this isn't like you're propagating through time. So this is not some kind of Newtonian trajectory. But what it looks much more like is a jagged path. Because in between iterations, you're either accepting or not accepting the next move. And the move is in a random direction. So, you know, subsequent steps are going to be jumping around my, my cursor right now and just kind of going in random directions but preferring to stay in kind of somewhat low energy regions. Okay, so it's not a trajectory as I said, and in Monte Carlo there is no time, 
it is just trials. So just the number of trials or the number of iterations in our algorithm until we've got enough of them that we're sufficiently satisfied that we've sampled enough that our properties that we get, our average energies, our average bond lengths, whatever we have, that we're satisfied we have a reasonable answer and that the error is fairly small in that, in that simulated value.